uh, the hospital that the nurses on our wing knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I think they, they sent me a steak dinner or something like that. But you know, when you, <laughs> when you have anesthesia, you, you're not eating for a few days. That's just not on your list. It was nice. Uh, but I was only in the hospital, uh, two days. Okay. Uh, okay. I was walking around the first, you know, the next day I was walking around, they force you to walk around. Uh, it was uncomfortable. People say, how much does it hurt? Now, pain for everybody has got a different level of, you know, pain, what you think hurts and what I think hurts, Mm -hmm. two different hurts. But for me, I always said, uh, yeah, it was uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable, but I was never in, you know, a stabbing pain that it was like, oh my God, you know, it wasn't that. It hurt. And uh, it lasted, I wasn't back to normal probably for about six weeks, maybe maybe eight, but mm-hmm. every day it got better. Every day, the next, you know, the next day was nowhere, wasn't as bad as the day before. And so I keep coming back to how much could it hurt that you wouldn't do this? Mm-hmm. I mean, how much is it really? So for me, after six or eight weeks, I was better. And then we got the phone call. And the phone call is, hey, how are you feeling? It's great. I feel great. She says, you know, if both the donor and the recipient agree to meet, Mm -hmm. uh, you can. Do you want to meet because they'd like to meet you and your family? (gasps) (laughs) So what would you do? Do this with me for a minute. Do you want to meet them if you did this? Definitely. 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 definitely Okay, that's a quick answer. Tell me why. What are you thinking that made you say that definitely? I guess it's coming back to to the little bit of selfishness and the whole thing is what what happened to my kidney? It's, it might be someone else, but um, no, I, I gave my kidney. I risked my life for someone. So I would love to know who that is. And and uh, no, as you said, probably I would love to hear a great story. And and no, not not meet that asshole, but meet that nice little lady. So that would going through my mind at least. Yeah, uh, it's like reading a book. You want to read the last chapter, right? You, mm-hmm. you've, you take, you made the story this far. Let's, let's see where it goes. So I was thinking that also, but when, when the rubber hit the road and they asked me, I responded, no, I said, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to take a pass. Okay. And they were, they were great. Uh, they said, we understand your decision and we'll, we'll pass it along. Why did you say no? <laughs> Why did you say no? Uh, Okay, so again, we know that we know the end of the story, mm-hmm. but at the time, I didn't know what was going to have happily ever after. At the time, I was thinking, so far, this story is a great story mm-hmm. with cheerleaders and cupcakes, and <laughs> all the way through <laughs> movies on planes and donating and peeing up a storm. It's a good, good story. It can't get any better for me. It couldn't get any better, but it could get worse. Uh, if, if we meet, here's my fear. My research had told me that there was a high probability the person who received my kitty uh, was black, African American, or yeah, black, black, It's a high probability because in the Washington D.C. area, there's a higher propensity for diabetes and other kidney-related diseases. Mm-hmm. So here's my fear: What happens when we finally meet, and this person? looks at me and goes, ooh. Mm-hmm. Now, they probably wouldn't, but oh, wouldn't that screw up the story? Wouldn't that be just a, a pain that I didn't do this for somebody to say thank you? That's not it at all. Uh, I wanted the results mm-hmm. of what it could do for that family, that person. And so I said no because I'd rather not know what's behind the curtain than find some something it's not good behind the curtain. But as I said, they respected the decision. And uh, a few days later, uh, they reached back out to me and they said, we just want to pass along a message. We told the recipient uh, what you said. And uh, they have a message for you. They said they don't want anything. Mm-hmm. They, they just want to meet your family and say thank you. Mm-hmm. So uh, I spoke with my wife and we quickly said, yeah, okay, let's do it. So three months exactly to the day after surgery, uh, they held a, I'll call it a press conference. It was in the 
uh, the office. Uh, it was in the conference room of the people that put this thing together. Uh, and they told me that, yeah, the press would be in there. And her, she and her family would be in there before us. So here I am. It's uh, my wife and I, my mom and my son are walking down a hallway. Uh, and I know on the other side of that doorway is my kidney. And, and <laughs> before surgery, was I nervous? Yeah, not a bit. We asked so many questions. But walking down that hallway, uh, yeah, I was nervous. I was more than nervous. And the door opens up and and there's, you know, some flash, you know, flashes. Uh, and... Everything fuzzed out. I don't see any of those people that are standing there. There's doctors. and But I see this tiny lady standing in the middle of the room, black woman carrying uh, a big bouquet of flowers. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's got to be her. The second thing I noticed is I'm 6'5". I'm very tall. Okay. Uh, probably 195 or something, I would say, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she's tiny. Uh, and it's just how things work, right? Tall, short. She's probably the most serious Christian I've ever met. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I question the big G's existence. Mm -hmm. I talk loudly. She kind of whispers. She's, you know, doesn't speak in unless there's a reason for it. <laughs> I'm happy to talk all the time. No problem. Uh, we're just opposites physically, spiritually, mm -hmm. in every possible way you can measure. And yet that day we first met, uh, we sat down at a table and for about two hours we shared with each other, how did we intersect? How did our lives put us together here? Mm -hmm. And you know what I told her, I've shared with her what I just shared with you about cupcakes and mm -hmm. the story. And she and her husband uh, shared with us just uh, a hard story, uh, having gotten out of Ethiopia and him being tortured in prison and uh, sickness, death approaching out of the blue. We find a kid, you know, it's a, it's, I have nothing but positive perspective on my story. She lives hell for, for 12 years, mm -hmm. 50 surgeries. I mean, oh, bad man. things, bad things. Uh, but as soon as they got the kidney, you know, three months before they said the day she got the kidney, everything changed. Uh, her health rebounded instantly. Uh, and so you look at these two as different as they can possibly be people that our families have been thrown together as We're now family. We're not two different families. We are connected in, in obvious ways. Uh, it's, it's a good, people hear the story. Somebody who might hear, watch, you know, our conversation, they're going to have the wrong impression of me. They're going to think, what a nice guy. And yeah, of course, it's, I'm, I'm nice and that was a good thing. But people hear the story and it's, nobody's that nice. Nobody's, you know. Nobody's that person. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part of the story. I tell people is that I'm normal, just like you. And with we do good things, we do some bad things. It's it's we're normal people, and it's not some special guy did this. It's a normal person did this. I I encourage people to ask questions. It's it's dangerous because you're going to get answers that might not freak out. But uh, I've got a folder on my desk of people that I've met who have reached out to me and shared with me that I'm one of the breadcrumbs that led them to donate to someone they know, someone they didn't know, a mm -hmm. friend. Uh, it, it come in all shapes, you know, just, and at the time in my life, as those little breadcrumbs are put, picked up and put in my pocket, you don't know it's a big deal. You don't know it's uh, a milestone of some sort. It's these things, it's these tiny things, but enough To tip the to tip the scale, yeah, yeah. When when you first talked, you mentioned that there were a couple of crazy coincidences between two of you. Two of you. So, first coincidence: when they told me she lived in uh, Springfield, mm -hmm. okay, uh, 
as I said, I worked in Springfield. So that was 10, you know, could have been there. Uh, then she, I said, where do you work? And she told me where she worked. It's <coughs> across the highway, directly across the highway from where I am. I can see her building from my building. <laughs> now, Washington is not a small place. Now, here's the good one. 17 years before surgery, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even know what a kidney does at that point. I'm not thinking kidneys. <laughs> I'm not thinking donation. 17 years before that, uh, I lived in an apartment building in Alexandria, Virginia, mm -hmm. with a high school friend. It's a 17 story building, actually. And we discovered when I met Gannett, that's mm -hmm. the lady's name who has my kidney. When we met, we discovered we didn't live in the same city. We didn't live on the same street. We lived in the same apartment building as each other Crazy. at the Crazy. same time as each other. Crazy. Crazy. Even now when I tell you that, I, I tingle going. So you were neighbors. So you were neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite possible. I lived there for two years. Mm -hmm. It's quite yeah. possible that we were in the elevator together. I mean, it's. How does that happen? That is crazy. And that I, is crazy. It, that is crazy. I, I tell uh, you know most of my friends, wow, that's a coincidence. And a lot of my friends look at me and go, that's that's not a coincidence. That's you know a big bigger hand at play. And I go, yeah, I, I don't think so. But it's a great, <laughs> it's another great little piece to this fun story. Yeah, it's amazing, crazy. What was your very first thought when you went through that room and, and saw her? What was the first thing that popped up in your head? Uh, she was tiny. Uh, and I was thinking, remember I said kidneys about the size of your fist? Mm -hmm. Harold is sporting I'm almost a two-fister. <laughs> okay. And my okay. first thought was, how did the doctors cram my two-fister inside that tiny lady? Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and this is kind of cool. So... <laughs> When you give someone your kidney, I think that gives you the right to ask anything you want. So I said, uh, can I see where, where you're the, you're back, where the kidney? Mm -hmm. And so she turns to the side and here, you know, this is what our back's supposed to, she's got, I, I can see a little bump out <laughs> okay. uh, of, of okay. my kidney and that's my kidney right there. I think, I think that's great. <laughs> uh, and I also asked her, uh, I come from a Jewish family and mm -hmm. Jewish food is, you know, I grew up with that. And so as a joke, I was just joking. <laughs> I said, so do you like corned beef sandwiches now? And she looked at me like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I was kind of thinking maybe <laughs> that she has my kidney. She's going to like the same things I like. But I think that that thudded to the ground. That wasn't very funny, but I, I cracked up at it. So, okay. Did you feel a relief? Did you feel a relief when you saw her? When you saw her? Well, I was relieved when I knew she was healthy because if you go back to the beginning, the beginning of the story, uh, that was the idea is to help somebody not have to say goodbye to a loved one, you know, that you could, you know, when dad died, there was nothing we could do to fix them. Mm -hmm. But the parts on the shelf issue that we can do something about. And so it just, it seemed liked, seemed appropriate, seemed good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, if she died on the operation table together with your kidney. Sad. Would you have said, oh, dang, that that's, that's the worst possible outcome of the whole story or? or It got wasted, not wasted. It, it didn't give somebody the life it was intended to do. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a disappointment without question. But that's part of what the day one, that's part of what the psychiatrist goes through. What happens if it doesn't work? What happens if they die? What happens if you never meet them? Yeah, these are all things that were tossed at me day one. Uh, and you don't know unless you're in the situation, right? How are you going to react? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? Uh, I had a happily ever after. So I, I didn't have to contend with that. But I'd like to think I'd be disappointed, but okay with it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, we, we didn't talk about your wife yet and your wife, Susan, I think is her name is in the room somewhere with you. And, uh, what, 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 what did, what did she say about it? What was her first reaction? Hey, Susan, come over just for a second. <laughs> Because, uh, I'm asked that often uh -huh. and, 
I give my response. But when I'm asked that question, uh, she's not always in the room. But now she is. Have, have a seat real quick. <laughs> hey, Susan. Hello. Doing great. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. So, so what was your first reaction? <laughs> well, at first I didn't think that he would be approved. So I said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He'll never make it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but when uh, it came right down to it, um, that, well, it's um, not my body. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a decision. That's such a, a, a personal decision um, that I couldn't be the one to stand in the way. Okay. 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 D did you ever think about... No, what if I need that kidney? What if our child uh, needs that kidney? What if, if no, my brother or sister or whatever needs that kidney? Uh, it, you know, it goes through your mind, but, it, you know, a lot of things can happen between uh, now and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you have to kind of uh, live with the decisions that you want to make every day to um, improve someone else's life, your life. That's going to be the name of my book, by the, by the way, between now and maybe I like that. <laughs> That's mine. That's ours. We got that. <laughs> so, um, would you have allowed her to give her kidney? Absolutely oh. <laughs> not. Now, seriously, I don't control seriously, her. Seriously, 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 I'm seriously. not yeah. laughing. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, yeah, yeah, okay. I, you know, she can do what she wants. I'm not her, but it wouldn't have had my blessing. No way. No way. Ask me why. Why not? You know why. Why not? <laughs> There's an op one in 3000 chance. She's not going to wake up from that surgeon's table. No, mm -hmm. that's not worth, it's not worth the risk. Yeah. But somebody needs it. Yeah. Let somebody else help. Uh, so <laughs> why do I have, why do I have, because I can, I can't explain it, <laughs> Okay, but okay. easy for me, not easy for her. Well, not easy for me, but it would be not easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Here to maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You just don't know. What, what did you feel, Susan, when he was you now wheeled away and, and you no know, on the operation table? Oof. Um, nervous. Mm -hmm. Nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, but we had spoken to the doctors and gotten all the information and the doctor had done that particular operation, you know, many, many times. Mm -hmm. Um so you just kind of have to, you know. We were in the best hospital in the city in Georgetown University Hospital. So you gotta have to, you know, hope and pray for the best um, and hope that they are, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, go, but going with, with statistics also. Yeah, yeah. Well, but Not so much that one in 3,000, but the, you know, with the doctor's statistics. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's uh, would have been a massive, concern for myself. I mean, one, 3000 is, is yes, it's way more likely that everything goes, uh, well and not, not wrong, but, but still there's no, not. I kind of question that statistic. Small. I'd have yeah. to see, I'd want yeah. to see what all the parameters, uh, you know, and who was included in that. Um, why were they going into surgery? Uh, if you're going into surgery, generally speaking, uh, it's for a reason other than that you're healthy and giving okay. as opposed okay. have to, I'd have to see, see that statistic on healthy people going to give a, you know, a kidney or bone marrow or part of their liver or something like that to see a little closer. And, um, they didn't have a whole lot of those statistics at the time. True. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. And so, so what, what do you think now about your husband? Do you feel he's a hero? Because I know that he, he, I, I know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is but great. it's interesting it's that, that uh, so many other people have mm -hmm. donated because of the story that mm -hmm. they've heard or seen or read about. Um, and there's just how many, 10, yep. 20 people that he knows of that have given directly because of the story. So mm -hmm. it, it is the, the <laughs> domino and it is um, a good thing when, when you know that it's having that impact on people mm -hmm. that maybe if they can't give themselves um to someone else it makes it normal it makes it not outside of a you know of a it makes it not crazy no no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and um you had well you still have a kid but that um your child was 10 years old at the time um 
Ja. Nej, nej, det er ja, ja. Did you ever think, ah, it's, it's, no, what if something happens? Would, would we ever be able to, to cope with that because of another person? Isn't I have a letter, I have a letter that I wrote uh, a couple of days before surgery that I put in my sock drawer mm-hmm. uh, before surgery that starts out, if you're reading this, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Luckily, that okay. I didn't have to read that letter. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think uh, at, at this point, if something happened and, and we had to look, you know, back and say, oh, we should have, or oh, mm. you know, um, I don't even know if we checked blood types anyway at that at that particular uh, point in time to see if there. We had to because we had had a child together. They check make sure our blood plays nicely, <laughs> don't they? No, we have yeah, but we have different blood types, you and mm-hmm. I. So I'm not even sure. Yeah. What Shai's blood type is. I, I know Shai's is O positive, oh. same as mine. Okay. So yeah. okay. the question is, yeah. could I have given one to my child if he needed one? And the answer is, uh, I would have. But the same thing I told my younger brother, who's a diabetic. Hey, what are you giving your kidney away for? I may need it tomorrow. And I always say the same. If you need one tomorrow, I'll get you one tomorrow. But somebody needs it today <laughs> and yeah. we'll cross that bridge if we ever see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Plus he has two sons. He can... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, more more backup than you. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, what, what do what do people tell you? I mean, you've I'm sure you've received a lot of letters. You've received a lot of people approaching and reaching out to you. What, what, what do people tell you? You know, what's what, interesting. What uh, just a snapshot. Uh, most people are most people I know. Mm-hmm. You know, were wonderful, supportive, and. Uh, asking lots of questions as, as they probably should. But we also, uh, I received some, some hate mail, uh, after there was a picture of us, uh, Gannett being an Ethiopian woman is, is black skinned. I'm lighter colored. Yeah, not, uh, and it was on the cover of a local magazine. Mm -hmm. Well, national magazine, national magazine. And it was, and so they wrote to our home address, a, a letter that basically said, you know, bad things, you know, how, how could you? And I laughed at it. And then Susan goes, what are you laughing at? They know our address. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So most people wonderful, but there yeah. was a couple aberrations that kind well, of shocked are, us. There are always will be. There's always someone who doesn't, he isn't happy. I mean, you, you could give away free money and, and cash and they would say, Oh, I want to wire. I want to wire. Want to wire. And this wire. was and this was before uh, the advent and explosion of social media. Can you imagine now? Mm. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, been, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Even okay. worse. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so um, we we talked about the issue of um, assumed consent and um, how it differs in different countries. So, also in Switzerland, it's the same. You have it's it's assumed that you do not give consent unless you explicitly do. Um, so what you need to do here is you need to, uh, register, um, ahead of time. Otherwise your, your relatives might decide for you, but usually if you wanted to donate yourself, then you have to register. Um, they're going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so they, you know, do you know what that website is? Can you say it? Do you, did you know what in Switzerland, what the, uh, um, I, what the hell do I, if you don't have it I, now, uh, I, I, I can give it to you. I have my, let me see. I had my little, my little you have a cheat sheet. No, not cheat sheet. Actually, I, I, I went to the Nate blood yesterday, so, um, I have everything in here. Um, is that a coincidence or did you do that on purpose because of this conversation? Um, well, actually I, I, it's, it was the first time in a year that I went, I didn't go for a year and, um, um, I, after we talked, I checked and I said, okay, when's the next time I can donate again? And it was like yesterday. So I said, Hey, that, that's a, that's a, that's a good reason to go again. I mean, I, 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 I donated many times in the past, but sometimes you know, life happens and then you don't go. And then I said, eh, uh, at least my little part that I can do in this whole <laughs> equation. Since we know each other and we're now personal with each other, how old are you? I'm at 36. I'm at 36. Okay. You're a 36 year old guy from Switzerland, how many times in your life do you think you've donated blood? Not Proxy. too many, probably Not 15 too many, times. Probably 15 times, I would say. Okay, that seems like an awful lot to me compared to the normal American. Is it common in Switzerland for people to do that? Is it normal? Um, 
I'm I'm always surprised, you no, know, like and, and I, I yesterday when I went again after um, a year or so, um, or even a bit more, um, I, I every time I go, the same thing goes through my mind. It's so amazing if you um, you think who else is gonna give blood with me, who else is gonna take the time in Switzerland? You don't receive anything, so it's it's oh yeah, okay, you get you get free cake and coffee. That's that's it. But you don't don't get any any. And in some countries, I think in Germany, you get. Um, a financial reimbursement, but in Switzerland, you don't get anything. So, um, and every time I enter those, it's usually in a, like a big gymnasium where they just set up everything and then you go through all the checks and then all the, the, the whole process. And I always think it's amazing. You have this amazing mix of people. You have, you have farmers, because I live in a rural area. You have lots of farmers like with dirty hands and everything. And they, they come in there like working clothes and they, like, you have bankers lying there. You have women, you have, you have, you know, man, you have big guys, small guys. It's, it's also amazes me that that's, um, for a brief moment in time, like all these people come together to, to give something just because they can. And it's always like, gives me a shiver if, if I, if I'm, if I'm lying there for, for a bit that's of time. Perfect. A bit of time. That's perfect, Rob. But I got to tell you, mm-hmm. you giving blood yesterday to someone you don't know mm-hmm. and me doing what I did, you know, that's on the same string, right? Mm-hmm. That's not a different string. Uh, it's a couple inches further down the string. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing, dude. <laughs> but to, to answer your question, um, I don't think it's that common. So um, the, the, the figures... Um, on the website of the Swiss, um, Swiss what's the name? Swiss. Um, it's actually the, the Swiss Red Cross who coordinates everything. Um, and there's a yeah um, blood donation organization in Switzerland that does it as well. And the thing is, it, it's it's not even in Switzerland. Like you have to have different a different. Um, you have to register for every different place that you go to, for every state that you go to, you have different, it's, it's not, it's not, um, there's no central organization. So you have to have a few of them actually, if you go, which is a bit of a pain, um, because you have to sign up every time and then you're a new donor every time. So that's no, and I travel a lot. So that's, I have a bunch of these, but, um, it's, 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 it's around 5%, um, of the population apparently that's, um, no, gives to the 95% to our really, you know, receiving ends. Well, uh, I think it's great. Uh, I, I give blood regularly. It's, it gives me the same. Someone needs it. I won't know them, but I know someone's using it. They don't go to waste. Uh, and it puts things in perspective. If somebody needs the blood or a kidney, uh, yeah, uh, I stubbed my toe today or a bad thing happened at work today. Yeah, it's bad, but I'm healthy. My wife's healthy. My son's healthy. Mm-hmm. I don't have those issues. So it kind of yeah. puts things in perspective pretty quickly as priorities, you know, what's important. Here comes the sunshine and burns away clouds like they never were.